Buddhism is the Buddha vision or the vision of the Buddha manifested in the Buddha's teachings recorded and preserved by his enlightened disciples. This Buddha vision is not the vision of his physical eye that but it is a mental vision of his mental eye that he referred to in his uh, very first maiden sermon called Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta as Dhamma Chakku, meaning the eye of Dhamma or the eye that can see the Dhamma. Here Dhamma means the truth or the reality he realized at his enlightenment. Normally in his teaching, the word Dhamma is used to denote what is sensed or what is known or what is grasped or what is cognized by the mind. The mind is called Mano and the object of the mind is called Dhamma, as we call the object or what is known by the eye, what can be sensed by the eye as Rupa, what can be sensed by the ear as Sadda, the sound, what can be sensed by the eye as Rupa, Rupa means the form, what can be sensed by the tongue as rasa, meaning taste? What can be sensed by the nose as ganda, meaning smell? What can be sensed by the skin? as potabba, the physical sensation, and what can be sensed by the mind as dhamma, the mental sensation. In this, uh, in this context, dhamma means really the object of mental sensation what the mind grasps or realizes. And it is the mental eye that realizes the reality of the life and the world at its enlightenment. The triggering of enlightenment or the initiance of initiation of his enlightenment was referred to by the Buddha in his first sermon as Chakkung Uddhapadi. Literally it means the eye arrows, but really it means his mental vision, the Buddha's mental vision means the Buddha vision arose. Then arose the knowing, the knowledge, the discriminatory knowledge, the difference, what he saw as a layman and what he could see as an enlightened one. Then arose Panya, Panya Udapadi the wisdom arose. 
Wisdom is the ability to evaluate and find out what is correct and what is incorrect. As a normal human being, we think as permanent, we think th as we see things as pleasant and desirable, and we see certain things as I myself and mine. But at the enlightenment, the Buddha vision. So, what is permanent as impermanent? It is called anicca. Buddha in his vision saw the entire universe and every item in it is dynamic. It is the creativity of the universe. And with that creativity, it is creativity means the universal energy. Energy is not a thing, permanent thing. It is a creativity, dynamic creativity. Every moment, everything is changing by that creativity. It is that change, it is that transformation of energy he referred to as Dukkha. Is every, if everything is changing and dynamic, changing from moment to moment, nothing can retain a permanent identity and that is called anatta. That is what the Greek philosopher called Heraclitus that lived in the same 5th century BC that the Buddha lived, said, no one can step into the same river twice because the river is constantly flowing down, going down, moving. When we touch the river by our feet once, this, that river is gone down, moved away when we touch it for the second time. So is even our skin. The molecules and atoms are changed every moment, every second. And when we touch our body, when we touch it again, we are not touching the same body we touched first, because it has changed. Even in an atom, the electrons are moving very fast, changing. Even protons and neutrons are rotating round themselves. They too are moving, rotating, like the earth is rotating. The new theory in physics called string theory founded from 1970 to 1995. There are five theories and the last theory amalgamated all the five theories into one called master theory of strings. There is only vibration in the universe and in every atom, in every subatomic particle in every quark. There is nothing permanent anywhere in the world. When we, when the Buddha realized this impermanency, its attachment to the world, its pleasures, was no more there. It got inst inst extinct and his raga, the attachment, turned into detachment. His resentment turned, resentment called dosa, turned into vita dosa. And his ignorance of the reality of the world changed into 
Panya. The moha, the ignorance. Now we are sent in the wrong direction of thinking through our attachment, through our resentment, and through our ignorance. Buddha, in his vision, saw the world and himself, its reality as it is. It is called Yata Bhuta Jnana Dasana, seeing things as they are. All that vision in the Buddha, called the Buddha vision, arose in his mind. Therefore, the Buddha vision is not the vision of our physical eye. Our physical eye has eyes have only a limited range of vision. That is why we need microscope and binoculars or telescopes. Telescope to see distant things and microscopes to see minute, small things because our physical vision is limited. But the Buddha's vision at its enlightenment was beyond all bounds. He saw the infinity of the universe and his mind became an infinite and that infinite is called sabbhajnuta jnana. He is said to be omniscient. Omniscient means that ability to sense everything and anything. It is the extreme sensitivity, infinite sensitivity that made him an enlightened one at his enlightenment. And we too could get enlightened even mentally, even by thinking, even by accepting the reality of the things as they are, not getting attached to anything, not resenting anything, but by taking things as they are, because they are ever-changing, everything is in a flux, flux. There's nothing that we can retain as I, myself, or mine. We are changing every moment. And let us accept the reality of the changing, and let us have a let-go mind. 